Chapter 40 Squad Wars Summary The ship repair squad is making some weapons, while the three remaining humans decide to form their own little squad and go shopping. What could go wrong? May had a feeling Izuku foresaw her insistence to modify the weapons themselves from the resigned sigh he gave her. They'd left Mr. Zyuntux without them because the man, rightfully, said they couldn't be trusted with them alone until after they'd had some proper lessons. They'd decided that it was worth it to take a week off from work to train every afternoon, leaving the mornings open for other things, such as Izuku, Denki, and her working on modifications. The weapons that Mr. Zyuntuk owned were okay, but she wanted to start from scratch, the same way she'd done back with Power Loader's support lab. While repairing spaceships was all well and good, support gear was really her forte. It would be nice to do something a little more familiar while getting used to advanced new tech. It would also be nice to introduce her two assistants to the wonderful world of support gear. Maybe May would be able to rope the others into something as well. She'd already gotten Mina hooked on their little pet project, after all. That possibility would have to wait. It was time to invent. She had six main weapons to modify, a couple of smaller items, and the siblings' tasers. Speaking of tasers, everyone needs to have an electrified element to their weapons. She already had some ideas, but this was a group project. It was an opportunity to see how far her pupils had come. Zuku was sure to shine in this little opportunity, and even if mechanics was not exactly Denki's forte, electrical engineering had come naturally. The next day, the three of them walked into her workshop bright and early. They only had a few hours until it was time to head over to Mr. Zyuntuk's, so they had to make the most of it. They'd all been here often enough that they each had their own little spots. Zuku quickly scampered up the countertop to settle in the little dip nestled in the wall, while Denki sat into his plush, beanback-like chair. She followed suit by settling down on her regular stool. Ideas? May suddenly said to her entourage. Um, well, I was thinking. Zuku nervously started, taking out one of his notebooks. For my shield, I was thinking it should be able to switch from a normal edge to an electrified edge to a sharp edge, which shouldn't be too hard, but... Also... Have you watched those pre-Quirk Marvel movies? Of course! Denki enthused. I didn't know you'd seen them! The Baku Squad marathoned them back on Earth! Who's your favorite character? Mine's Spider-Man, of course. He was cut off before he could go on an hour-long tangent, when she said, Less Marvel, more inventing. Plus, even though the technology's still unrealistic, Iron Man is clearly the best. Denki looked aghast at her claim but Izuku forged on before the electric blonde could retort. Right, so what I want to try and do is make the shield returnable, like Captain America's. May hummed. Hmm, that should be possible. The electromagnetic technology in space is really advanced, so if we... Mina was bored. Sure, she could work out or tidy up camp, but none of that would help them get home. Nothing she, nothing she could do would help them get to Earth faster. It felt suffocating not being able to do anything to really help. Sure, working made money, which they needed to pay off the ship and ship parts, but they would needed to take the week off. It wouldn't matter whether or not they had the money if they got kidnapped again. So, she was bored and feeling jittery wanting to help the ship. The only people who could repair the ship were off doing their own little squad activities. Well, she could do something. She'd make her own little squad. If they were going to be living on that ship for six months before going home, then it might as well feel like home. Mina pushed herself up off the cool grass and skipped over to where Kotsky and Ochako were tidying up the camp. They certainly tried to make camp as comfortable as possible, but it never really felt like home. Not quite. The whole area was a bare-bones patchwork of whatever they could find. Nothing special. Losing this space would be devastating, yes, but that was more because of the security it provided, not any real attachment. Mina felt more attached to the town than here. She'd spent more time there anyway. 
what she wanted to create was their own home away from home, something they would actually miss. Space didn't have to be all that bad. Sure, she wanted to get home, wanted to see her friends and family again, wanted her future to go back to the way she'd planned, but things would never be the same. This would change the course of her life forever. But she knew better than to fight against it every step of the way. The best thing you can do when faced with inevitable change is to embrace it. Don't let it drag you under. Instead, let it lift you up to new heights. So they would have the best damn space road trip they could. Make good memories that they would cherish, wipe the traffickers off the face of the universe, and make it home. The first step towards that was making their space road trip vessel more pleasant. I have an idea of what we can do today! She exclaimed. Kotsky just gave her a quiet glare, while Luchako turned away from organizing firewood. You know how Mei, Izuku, and Dengi have their whole tech squad? I was thinking we should make our own squad! I haven't actually narrowed down what squad it will be, but I have figured out what our first squad activity should be. She got two simultaneous replies. That sounds great. That's dumb. Come on, Kat. Are you really going to let their squad be better than ours before we've even started? Besides, you haven't even heard what I have in mind. The blonde just continued to sort through cooking ingredients, barely glancing her way as he talked. Don't need to hear what you want to do to know it's probably stupid. We need to focus on getting back home, not painting our nails. Mina scoffed. Rude, but it's not like anything we're doing right now will actually help us get back to Earth. I'm proposing something that will make our trip back a little more comfortable. Besides, it needs to be done anyway, so it's technically kind of helping. The only difference is that I'm suggesting we go 1,000%. Come on, Mina, Ochako teased. You're getting me all excited, but you still haven't said what your idea is. At least she had half of her audience on board. She knew Kotsky would be a tough sell, but it didn't matter. She was not giving up. Okay, so, you know how the ship's interior has been all fixed up? Yeah, Ochako nodded. Well, it still needs to be furnished. I was in there a little while ago, and there's not even mattresses or sheets. Like I said, these are the kind of things that need to be done anyway, so I'm suggesting we really go all out, make it as comfortable as possible. So, who's up for a little shopping trip? I haven't been thrifting in ages. She couldn't help but smile at the prospect. Hold on, raccoon eyes. We don't have the budget for your Barbie Dreamhouse makeover. First, we need to move what we do have in and take stock of what we really need. Then we should check out the dump for things, especially appliances. Then we can get the rest of the essentials for cheap at a thrift store. Mina smiled even wider. That was a whole lot of we, Baku babe. So it looks like the squad is ready for our first outing. Kotsky just sighed in defeat. Someone has to make sure you don't spend all our credits on animal print bedsheets. She'd take this for the win it was. May's heart was beating out of her chest. One part from fear, one part from excitement. How did you manage to make a virus that infected all of the technology in the laboratory that makes it want to kill us? She whispered, hoping they didn't hear her from where the three of them hid. I'm sorry, Denki whimpered, face in his hands. I don't know how I messed this up so bad. I just got bored when you two were talking about how to make Kotsky's bow fully collapsible, and I just... It just happened, okay? May cocked her head. Do you think I'm upset? Denki let out a choked chuckle. I might have gotten you fired or us killed. Nah, she dismissed. I won't get fired over this. Us dying, on the other hand. Izuku tugged them further down the hall as movement sounded from behind them. If anything, I'm intrigued. I have no idea how you managed to create such a malicious, intelligent virus, but I love it. We're gonna die, and you're insane, Denki whined. Izuku just looked straight at him and deadpanned. 
Yep. Nobody moves! This is a robbery! The criminal shouted, walking up to the girl behind the counter. Transfer the credits from the local cash disc to me, and nobody gets hurt. Well, fuck. There goes their nice, relaxing shopping trip. Mina thought this town was low crime. How is it that as soon as they start browsing the second-hand store, a robber shows up? Was a Zugu hiding behind the shelves somewhere? Since when was the rest of their luck this bad? Oh no, villain magnetism must be contagious. The young girl behind the counter looked panicked at the spider-like woman's demands. What civilian wouldn't be? There were only two more people in the store, an elderly couple by the looks of it. Maybe if everyone just cooperated, things would go fine. Just as she thought that, the robber made a move. The spider woman was fast. Before any of them could react, she had a hostage. Good news, the elderly couple and the clerk were okay. Bad news, explosive blondes don't make for the most cooperative hostages.